Hello and welcome to The Death of YouTube, episode three. I am Kyle. I'm here with Ian. Hiya. Uh, today's episode is about uh, Gary the Miss... Oh, wait, no. What even is this show? It's a show where we talk about videos that we made. Uh, we're, we had a YouTube... Start over. Start the whole... No, no, no. The... We, we, we roll with it. We roll with it. Ignore... Welcome. We didn't even say the whole, the whole name of the video. <laughs> it's okay. We made videos. They we were important videos. to us and maybe sometimes other people. We're talking about them. This one's called Gary the Miss in the Drum. We saved it. Uh... The the all of our videos were collected into a uh, a playlist called the Door Monster Essential Binge Watch playlist, and so Ian and I are just going through each one of those videos in order and making a an episode about each one of them. And today's episode is about Gary the Misanthrope, which, which I, I'm very excited about. And also, I immediately realized watching this video, this podcast can't be for people who don't know who we are. Right? No, absolutely. Th- not. There's no enjoyment out of that. <laughs> it's got to be. It's like. It's just talking about people who are bad at something, pretend they were good at it, and uh, but now they know they're bad again. So it's just, yeah. it, it's like when you watch a movie about like a gangsters reliving their, their glory days, but they're, they weren't gangsters because that would have been cool. And um, it wasn't really that glorious either. <laughs> no. It's like, what if you were washed up from having a bad career that you was a, a poor choice that you weren't good at? And that's most people's actual lives, though. I think we are I, two white nerds talking about how we don't really understand technology. There's no, there's no value <laughs> to this whatsoever, <laughs> uh, unless you know, unless you know who we are. Because if you know who we are, I can say things like that mailbox I stuck dirt in. That was John's. And if you don't know us, that's not funny. But if you do, it's very, it's funny. very funny. <laughs> oh man, uh, like I think that if if I don't know, let's let's propose a hypothetical, right? You have a man, his name is Jorgen, and Jorgen is imprisoned in a room. And the only thing Jorgen is allowed to do is push a button that plays the next episode of the Death of YouTube podcast. Um, <laughs> I think after 457 episodes, or how many or many episodes are in the playlist, right? Um, uh, Jorgen will have accidentally picked up some pretty cool insights into filmmaking, story writing, and humor uh, that are uh, totally against his will because he did not want to hear about them from us. <laughs> I think you're right. I think that's that's a good point. I'm 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 being too hard on us. <laughs> um, I do think that's that a better education than most film schools give you. Right? Yeah. See, <laughs> that's the kind of insight we're looking for. Film school bad. Write that down. You're taking notes, yeah. right? This is there's a lot in this one. Um, first off, yeah. I, yeah, this was a montage assignment for your film school, right? That's it was, and yeah, that we I we already had you and I had come up with this idea already, and then I had an editing class that I had to make a montage for, and I was like, hey, we wanted to make a montage, so we decided to use it to, as an excuse to make this video, and we made it fast for the time, but it took two weeks, so compared so like really mm-hmm. slow for now, but really fast for then, because our previous time was like. Th- six months and then now it's a couple of days this was the bridge this was the video that showed yeah. us like oh hey we can film this fast prior to this you had told me to watch out for ideas that could be made into sketches yeah that's right because i was looking at an animal video and i think said something out loud like who dislikes kitten videos and, and i then... just said skit right <laughs> so this is the very first video that i had a significant amount of input on uh and would actually be like a pretty high high watermark for input for me and videos for a while um, not that True. I wasn't involved in a lot, but I was really involved in this one, actually. Yeah, no, you and me actually just like str- just jointly wrote this one. Like once yeah. I had the I, once I once I had the assignment from school, we got together at your place and like brainstormed the list of shots because that's right. all because it, it, it was just a montage. There's no writing. Right. It was just it, what if this guy is an asshole to everybody for yeah. a while? I've heard you tell people like uh, what Ian is really good at is lists. Um, and this is a list. This is like <laughs> the most pure form of list video. So. It is. I actually, the the punchline thing is kind of important. I never, I, I didn't, we didn't bring that up last time, but that is kind of something people point out about us a lot. And if you go watch other YouTube sketch comedy, um, especially anything past like the golden age of it, you know, like 2015 on, a lot of it is just sort of like they do the one joke a yeah. uh, mm-hmm. few times and then it ends. And that's sort of how it goes. And we've always very specifically like hit an unexpected punchline or twist or something at the end insistence on very certain like elements of story structure in a very flexible way i think are like a hallmark of a lot of these early sketches i mean and and the very very bones and skin of everything that follows but like it's a uh it's not just do this do the joke three times do the joke three times make one joke that's different do a joke that's like you you always have like a an arc, like there yeah. had to be an actual like story to it. There had like it had to be. I don't. I don't know why. I'm. I'm having trouble remembering back now. Like what 
originally taught me to do that because generally I, I just imitate. I like see something and I'm like, that works, and then I'll just copy that. But like I definitely got it in my head where it's like this has to be going somewhere or there's no point in making this. I like think, there needs to be a conclusion to this in right. some way. I think this is this is I mean, I'm I'm sure there is some some where you're imitating from and like uh, help like latching onto, but also I this I do think this is actually like one of the things that is like a very innately important to you in media watching. I, I can always count on like if the pacing is bad or uh, the story sequencing is awkward, this will ruin it for you. Like yeah, it, it is that's like, true. And you're not like a you don't have like a you're not rigid about it. It doesn't need to be the same story structure like you always hate the Shakespeare thing. It is that the the five act structure. Like, like, but uh, the three act structure. I actually am a big fan of the Shakespeare version. But oh, I, right. yeah, the yeah. original like like or, the three act hero's journey as is a pet peeve of mine. Like you hate structure for structure's sake, but like as long as but there needs to be a structure for you. I think that's very clear. Um, yeah, I, I think that is such a huge huge benefit to our videos because the main weakness of lol so random 2009 humor was that there was no point to any of it it went nowhere and that was okay for the time but looking back it's aged horribly um yes yeah no it definitely like feels like the a product of its time <laughs> right and i think uh ours are immune to a little bit of that um because we strongly resisted lol so random there's no point it's going so i mean the, where it's going may not be worth going but it is going right. somewhere. <laughs> it's it's basic, but it works. There are, um, you know, there's things do work well, and that's why people have done them well. And a lot of times trying to subvert those things might make like an interesting, shocking piece of media that kind of grabs people's attention. But I think the stuff that lasts a long time is stuff that has uh, some familiarity to it. Like go going deep and not tall, maybe, if mm -hmm. that makes any sense as a metaphor on, on things, I think has always been helpful to me like i'd rather see a bunch of complete stereotypes just like really really fleshed out and explored maybe that's just part of getting older because like when we were mm. younger like the i mean that was all joss whedon was about that was all right like, yeah yeah it was the subverting expectations era it was that you think right. you're predicting what i'm doing -uh, watch this i made lost actually and though like i think it's, it's it's funny because i think the people who who got out of it the 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 most unscathed in terms of the, how their narrative work not holds up, not necessarily their uh, personal uh, character, <laughs> um, were the people who were the best at subverting the idea that, like, uh, who who told us they were subverting expectations and then just didn't. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, there is not one single <laughs> new idea in Avengers, the first one, except that we could afford to put all of these actors on the same screen together. That's the right. only innovation. Um, and and that still might be the best Marvel Universe movie. <laughs> I think the way that people enjoy stories goes in waves and goes in like ebbs and flows and pendulums and things. I think witty, observational, uh, tight paced comedy is out for a bit it's it's less it's less in than it was when we were doing it now we're in like a very sort of postmodern swing where what's fun is like uh the vibe and like sort of the absurdity of like i don't know like the concept on the whole like it's not the same level of like uh scientifically critical uh witty uh sharpness that we 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 like yeah and our and our audience certainly likes it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure anybody else does because again, right. this isn't how you make money. Nope, certainly not. <laughs> this is, I yeah. think that's what sets us apart. I think it's distinctive. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Anyway, here let's let's dive into this actual video yeah, here. Go. My first observation is, my God, the color. Right. So I want to ask, what happened? Did you drop I, it <laughs> in a pond? This is this, cause this I I so I know that you're colorblind, right? I know that you don't know what a color is. This there this is not an excuse for this war crime of an effect. <laughs> I feel like you attempted to put a sepia filter on it, but yeah. accidentally uh, also uh, uh, poured like a purple laundry uh, detergent on it. Like I definitely thought I was doing something artistic. I was like, I'm going to make it like muted and like depressing looking. Well, what really stood out to me is like there's a bit in the middle where you're standing in front of a target, right? Yeah. And the bricks on that target are turquoise blue. A, I still can't tell. I believe I, you, but I... Right. It's just, it's just not a color that exists, is the thing. <laughs> the thing that's standing out to me, and, and I can tell this is where I went mostly wrong, because I know better than to do this now, is I actually even adjusted the white value in mm -hmm. this video. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. things that are blown out pure white are, like, yellow? Is that what color that is? Everything is yellow. Yeah, there's nothing that's not yeah. yellow. Even even the purple is yellow. Even okay. the red is yellow. It's, a, it's such an interesting way to incorrectly color grade a video. <laughs> I don't think a person who can see color could make this. 
I, I think you're right. I, and I, I, you're, you're making it sound way more impressive than it is. I know it looks like garbage. <laughs> like you're using very, very friendly language to describe how bad this video looks. I feel like I'm being pretty savage, actually. <laughs> okay, so you know what this actually looks like to me? Uh, it looks like when I put on polarized sunglasses, any shot with green in it, the green is true. Interesting. Uh, the trees, that, that's, a, that's a good green on the trees. Um, uh, the leaf that you pluck, that's a good green leaf. It's weird things like uh, at the final shot, the shadow around the table is green, like the trees and the grass should be, but it's Texas. Or in the scene with, uh, with the give a penny, take a penny, everything on yeah. that shelf is completely, utterly the wrong color, except for something in a green box behind him. Like uh, green is the only color that's, uh, that made it out of this video live. Weird. I could not begin to tell you what I did because it's probably I'm not even sure what I edited this on, like which version of Premiere I had or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know what I don't know if I used a preset. I don't know if I tried to do this manually. I just thought that made sense. Thought it looked good. Thought it fit the vibe of the video. And it does actually. I think it's classic in a way. Um, uh, like it's certainly iconic. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, and it was never repeated again. <laughs> right. I know. I like it. I really do. Um. It's, I've, uh, it's yeah i it's i mean you know it's one of those things it's it became part of it like any like cult classic right like they right. the mistakes become part of the appeal but it's also like it, it's things like this or th like like jp composed the music right yeah he came over after i edited it and watched it and then actually composed it in real time like we sat there watched mm -hmm. the video and he played it live uh and and recorded it as he did it and then i put that in the video the uh, uh the music itself is i think beautiful um uh, however you recorded it is not beautiful. He, it's like, yeah, I, I think he he recorded it straight into his keyboard. Like it was again, we were still in yeah, high school. So his equipment at the time was just he had an electric keyboard that could save the song he was playing, and then you could plug that via headphone into the computer, and then I could pop open WavePad or whatever I used at the time to like record off my off of the the input as if it was a microphone. Pretty sure that's how that happened. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's awful well how did anybody do anything ever i don't know you know what very poorly if you go look at old <laughs> behind the scenes stuff for like old old movies and like oh, walt yeah. disney cartoons they were just as janky speaking of other people uh in this video we have uh, everybody's a lot of first appearances going actually on. i was looking at this so for a long time this is door monster this is white lightning every yeah. every single person in white who is going to be anybody in white lightning up until like what I, I, I can't even think of the next person we add, actually. Uh, like, this has uh, me, you, Ricky, JP, uh, John. Yeah, Reed. Like, Reed. That's like uh, six. Jeffrey's not in here. I guess he's the only Jeffrey, like, yeah, Jeffrey's OG the next guy. one, right? Instead of Jeffrey, we have Jamie, who never really shows up again, except for community comments that one time. Yeah, really, exactly. <laughs> um, but, like, actually, like, except for Jeffrey, like, uh, this is it for, like, ever. Almost yeah. for, like, for a long time. It's a, a that's another thing I want to do. I always wanted to have a sketch where everybody's in it. Um, but in, like, yeah, have we not accomplished that? I'm, we yeah, got I'm real close. Go. We got real close a couple times, but never all of them. Hmm. Not even any of the finales or anything. No, it's always like some weird thing. Like Ricky is like deathly ill because he's drank the poisonous Lubbock amoeba because there was nothing else to do, <laughs> and that of course gets harder as we get more and more people. Right. In. Yeah. That, that I, certainly has not uh, improved. There's like a there's a, a good mix of random people and people we know and like we were, we were really scouring like yeah we just had to we had to collect people we had to like cast a video <laughs> you know, we had to like I mean it was it was kind of like we were filming a full movie just like mm -hmm. with the you know with the skills that we had it was like gonna take as long as it would to film a full movie uh, so we just sort of this was sort of the earliest large project at, at least in ter like in relative terms this was like a big thing oh yeah and so we had this park day and uh, we needed well, I was missing one person for this shot because I wanted it to be a different person I was interacting with every single time uh, that was the that was why we had so many people because I, I didn't want it to be just like harassing one guy uh, and we actually technically fail at that do we do we have a repeat and you we, we use my shoulder. Uh, to take Jamie's picture, but we keep my face out of it so we could pretend. Right, that's right. Anyway, we needed we needed somebody for this last shot on the merry-go-round, and so then there was a guy at the park, and uh, and so I just walked up and asked <laughs> if mm -hmm. he would if he would do this uh, this thing, and learned that people will just kind of say yes to that, <laughs> which uh, yeah. mm -hmm. which came in handy later on in my career. <laughs> Ricky and I will also do this several times in our sketches when we were like gorilla shooting and things like. Hey, oh, you, yeah. You want to be on the internet? I guess, yeah. 
You want to know who we are so you can watch yourself on the internet later? Absolutely not. Literally nobody yeah. wanted that. The, they just, this Logan guy d- has never seen this video, guaranteed. Yeah. He has no idea that this <laughs> – he does right. not remember this happened. Uh, we don't even know his full name. That's why he's credited as uh, Logan We do. From it's Logan from the Perk, <laughs> sir. It's a very convenient find. Why, why are we wearing the same shirt, though, Ian? Are we? What? Oh, no. Me and Logan. Are we wearing the same shirt? Because I'm. I washed it through this time. And I'm not sure I noticed before, but it looks like we're wearing the same weird splotchy gray t-shirt. That might be because of the color correcting. Well, it's because <laughs> of the color correcting and also because it was 2010. And like, <laughs> we just uh, had the same Coles shirt on. <laughs> vaguely not, uh, kind of, the the, uh, the suggestion of bleach washing shirts was very in. Uh, well, I you know, it's also the highs and lows thing. Like, all the colors are so out of whack and like, just the values are out of whack. I'm not sure that either of their shirts are actually bleach washed. They just look like it. I do think this one was like a splotchy gray. I had like two gray color shirts and I was like, Gary the Misanthrope wears gray, obviously. I haven't talked about the face I'm making. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. just kind of taking that as a given at this point. That was like the first thing for some reason in my mind. I, I, when we came up with the idea, I was like, he's got to be making some cartoonish frowny face the entire time. And I remember practicing that in the mirror and figuring that face out. I think you drew it before you made it, probably. Like, I might this, have. Uh, I think is this, this is also the very uh, last shot, right? JP is reading a book. This is important, yeah. actually. It's your book oh, of right. comics. Oh, it is. Your, it's stranger was, than thought, fiction. I thought you were going to say the face was important because JP starts making the same That's face true, at the end. That's true, too. Yeah. But, like, but I think I, that came after. But then, no, yeah, he is, he is in fact, reading uh, the thing I made before I started videos, which is my comic strip book. This is how I, like, when I first was introduced to you by Jeffrey, you just, this is what your daily activities were, where, where uh, interacting with people, uh, harvesting material for comics and then making comics. Right. I was actually doing um, the same thing. It I is the same thing. I didn't have a camera yeah. yet. It's mm-hmm. also just me and my friends, but in comic form. Right. Which is, I think, so this is, this is, this is where it is, right? You're, you're so influenced by what, like, uh, Calvin and Hobbes, right? This is that is very true. Yes, and that's a I big think one. This brings you a lot of your structural background because you're fitting things into comic boxes. Literally, you're right? I think you figured it out. I think that's yeah. what it is. Did, was that this episode or was that last episode? Wow, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, one hundred percent. I think that I, I think that absolutely is it. I think Calvin and Hobbes was like my first. Like, here's little jokes, but they're always structured into this like neat story, and they have some kind of meaning behind them. Right. Yeah. And I, I mean, and, it, and like I said, it's, it's not that you were so rigid on a structure, just any structure, because, of course, Calvin and Hobbes will also break comic panel rules if it's fun or if it's good. So, yeah, no, but. that makes sense. Uh, we also have the uh, my I, I actually started doing like non flashy, like hidden CGI in this video. Yes. For the volleyball. For, it was actually for a couple things. This was the this was the first time where I started. I, I was figuring After Effects out because I wanted the shots to look a certain way and they didn't turn out that way. And so I, I spent time trying to, like, fix them. There was, like, a, mm-hmm. there was this weird bird shadow that, like, ruined the shot of the of me pulling the can out of the trash or something. So I went mm-hmm. in and, like, erased that because it was distracting and weird. And then, yeah, all the way up to, like, the shot with the, the girl holding the volleyball in the one where I build the sandcastle in the middle of the volleyball court. Um, we didn't have a volleyball. Mm-hmm. And so so began my career of going... Don't worry, I can fix that later. Yeah, let's go. And so she's holding like this a basketball, big, I think. It no, that no? would have been easier. Oh no, she's holding a, one of those big, weird, squishy balls with all the little tendrils coming off of it. That's actually physically the worst possible thing she could be holding. I know. It I would remember. be better if she killed <laughs> Logan from the perk and was holding his head. It would have. It would have been easier to replace, that's for sure. Because also that ball squishes in in a way volleyballs don't. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, and uh, But yeah, that, that was my... I, I was just like, yeah, hold that. It'll be easy to see. I can just plop a picture over it. And that's, right. and that's what she's holding. She's, she's not hold, that's not even a, like a 3D model of a volleyball. That is a Google image search yeah. photo of a volleyball um, that I just rotated so the shadow was on the right side. And then I think, I think hand rotoed her arm around it because they didn't have the mm-hmm. roto brush tool at, at the time. And you tracked did. it because they couldn't track. The, I, I just frame by frame moved the volleyball into place and then cut her arm out. And it's pretty good. And I don't think anyone has ever noticed. I, I, I don't even, I can't even tell, really. I can't. I do notice it every single time I watch it. But, I do, but only because I know that you did it. Like, is it, yeah, like, is it noticeable or is it just because like, you're like, oh, there's that volleyball shot? There's like two <laughs> frames where the, the volleyball wiggles up just a teeny, teeny bit. It does wiggle a little bit, but, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, but other than, like, I, sure, I don't know if you'd notice if you were just watching it, like, fresh. Sir, and, like, I don't think so. Well, maybe also, you'd be like, that looked weird, but I don't know. 
I think you like ideally if we were if we are successful filmmakers, and at this point we are clearly already in uh, the stage where we can say we are fully fledged, mature, successful filmmakers who do everything right. Um, uh, you would want us. You would want to be looking at the sandcastle or something, probably. But right, yeah. Actually, most yes. people don't know what's going on in that shot because yeah. uh, that it's, it's just not composed well. Right. <laughs> like it's, the focus is not on the right spot. Um, right. I will say, I think it's one of the only shots in the video where that's true. I, there's actually a lot of really like kind of high level, not high level, uh, co- like. I don't know. I, I guess like very competent student level like uh, shot making in this. Uh, when John ro- walks up to throw the can away, and you cut to John throwing the can away in the middle of the of, of him throwing it away, it's that's just true. A, a really nicely tailored like because normally cutting from a person to a person is always difficult and bad unless you do it well, and you did. It was just like that's true. That, yeah, that was just a really good in sequence cut there. Um, Unfortunately, it was ruined by the by fact it? that there's a goddamn drop frame in the middle of the. F- fucking video which i am just forever bothered by and it will haunt me to my grave i never did it again because of this one video now see i'm not sure that i've ever noticed that yeah no the second john drops the 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 coke into the trash can to switch it cuts to black for literally one frame and i didn't notice until it had already been on maybe i just thought that was like an artistic pov the can shot other other little tricks um we could not manage to build a card house big enough <laughs> for me to knock over so that's taped together we also taped that leaf to the branch mm-hmm. that you another, see little, that. another little fudge and then we also for the uh for this one shot with me shooting the balloon which became ricky's like channel icon for years mm-hmm. after that point for some reason i think we tried shooting it first uh with an airsoft gun not a real gun just to quiet the heart attack of anybody who was listening there for a second. It was an airsoft gun. We tried shooting it, and I, I think it just bounced off the first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, um, And so I think what we actually ended up doing, we tried a few versions of it, and one of them was we just had, like, a needle sticking out the end of the gun so that we could, like, get it kind of close, and then it would pop the balloon, and then I could still add the muzzle flash in. But I think the one that actually makes it in, we do successfully shoot it. If I recall, this was one mm-hmm. of those where we got it right the first time and then tried all these other ones to get it better, and just none of them worked. So we ended up going with the first one anyway. I do think it's kind of funny, because I, for years, I, I remember looking at that and going, I think Ricky could have done a little bit better job responding to that. That like it's Everything is sort of in a slow, dreamlike state, so nobody needs to be like, I have like, a human like reaction to anything, right? Uh, yeah. But I always thought like his little like arm raise was particularly sort of like, I don't know, off. But you know what though? Actually, he just does that. That's actually <laughs> that's, those are actually just Ricky reactions. That's Ricky true. Would just do things like that. I think that's um, how we react to that exact situation. It just like it's just a, it, it, that's that's honest. That's genuine. That's acting. Um, uh, also, shout out real quick in the balloon scene. Literally, I believe the only time in the entire world that uh, you're taller than Ricky. I, I am actually taller than Ricky just in real life by a little bit. It, it doesn't feel like that's true. Yeah, but like realistically, no, though, right? Like it's just, <laughs> we can we can we can measure. We can get out like the little the, the, the tapes and the, the the tools of science, as they are called. Uh, but they're just lying I think, to us. I think we're actually roughly the same height. If you look at the shot, like I'm wearing shoes and he's not. And I also think I'm on like a very slightly raised piece of ground. I think if we're both standing completely level, that we're actually the same height. Of most, I think people think I'm a lot shorter than I am because people always comment on my height when they meet me in real life. I think I give off very like, very like ang energy. So people assume mm. I'm like child size. That's true. That's true. <laughs> But no, I'm like six feet tall and people show up and they're like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I don't know if you were six feet tall yet, though. Like, I think for sure Ricky gets I wasn't. I was a college now. student, Ian. This yeah. was, <laughs> I was an I, adult. Like, I think you being. still had like a good seven or eight productive growing years after this one. But <laughs> after your 12th birthday, it was a you are, I think, noticeably uh, older looking than the Toast Launcher video. Where, I mean, you often look like a teenager, True. but in Toast Launcher, you actually look like 11. You look... Well, I think I think there was a year in between these yeah. videos, at least, which it, because that's how we filmed stuff back then. We, we did one right. video a year. Oh, like, this was only... <laughs> we only filmed this because it was a, a class assignment. That's like... Right, yeah. Uh, no, we, and, to... and you were, like, you were sort of shopping around for skit ideas, and I said skit, and this was, like, a, that was a good one. But then it's like, oh, that could be the montage that I need to do with glasses. Yeah, I remember, I, I I really enjoyed making the video, and I really, like, I was very proud of it when we were done. Like, it was it was one it's that good. I went back and rewatched multiple times, and I'll still go back and watch it now, honestly. Yep. Like, it's, it, feel, it feels a little, like, you know, like, early career, but it, you can see a lot in there, mm-hmm. I think, that, like, we put a lot of effort into it, and I think, There's it, like, I think I, it shows... I, I, uh, the sequence of shots in the take a penny sequence 
is yeah. really good. Like just like uh, from from the the framing to his face to the sign uh, to you, like it's I, I that's just really successful. Just like visual motion. Like, that's uh, true. Yeah, narrative motion I think it did work pretty well. I also think that this guy who's standing behind the counter, this is this is not something I think about in this particular way a lot. But like, I've always just like thought like this is one of the most like objectively good looking people we have in a sketch for like no. a long stretch. I know that's specifically what he was known for at the school. It's as super far as I'm weird. <laughs> it's like he's just like actually like a model, and he's like an extra. I don't get it. Like yeah, he just like this. It's he stands out as he's in a different art style. Uh, from <laughs> yeah, the really rest is. of the video, <laughs> he was no, yeah, he was. It's definitely like a like a like an anime character in the same like show, like showing up in Ed Ed Nettie or something. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of, like, very much what it feels. Just like. noticeably kind of gorgeous, and it's like weird. He's also English because of course he is. Wow, really underutilized <laughs> there with no dialogue. And I don't even I don't even remember his name. I, it might be in the credits, but he it just is, was um, at the school at the time and worked in the school store. David Valencia. Mm. Yeah. Don't know him. Mm, yep. <laughs> just, mm. Why would just we? had him be in this. That was just what you did, though. Everybody, it was film school. So you, uh, three times a week, somebody walked up and was like, hey, can you do this shot? And you were like, yeah. Uh, this is the first time we make the classic mistake of filming in front of an open, blaring window the wrong direction. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Still no lighting going on. Right. This is like, but my house, is, this is filming in my house. My house is preternaturally dark. Uh, my house true. swallows lighting. Like it all that light yeah, is like does. streaming through that window. It stops right, right, <laughs> right after it ruins our camera shot. Um, it's crazy how dark my house is. Um, there's like some funny things. Like because there's no lighting in the color grading, and when you're putting dirt in John's mailbox, it's a really well balanced shot because you're like part of this like dark conglomerate, gloomy mass on the left of frame, and there's this like bright, happy, uh, very, very foregrounded mailbox. Uh, <laughs> but just if we just if we just like done this visually correctly uh, would not have been uh, separated from the background so well. I feel like this video is almost more important behind the scenes than it is as a finished product compared to some of the other ones. Yeah, I think so too. Like, I mean, I do like that it is actually a montage assignment with a montage. Your montage is also, by the way, kind of not a montage. Like, it is a montage by any sort of technical definition of montage, right? Right, we're and not that's all I needed. <laughs> right. But we're not seeing, like, a progression from point A to point uh, F with like uh, the, right. the middle letters like smooth through. We're not seeing like a lot of character arcing here. It's just like uh, in terms of a, a montage, it just isn't. It's just funny because it's just it's but in, better. But in it year is. one of college, if somebody puts that much effort into something, you give course, them the best yeah. grade anyway. It doesn't matter. Right. Like it's just, <laughs> uh, it's just, if we're being like, I think it's just funny that you could like, I don't know. I, I get these feelings as a teacher a lot when, I'm, when I try and set like specific like assignment boundaries to attempt to get children to learn something on accident. Um, and then they they learn something else different because they did it wrong enough that they succeed. And it's yeah. like, all right, we take those. I wish I could do that on purpose better, but uh, we take those. Okay, and this is, this is the last most important thing. I think this is the first appearance of uh, our most important uh, set dressing uh, trademark, which is uh, your handwriting and the give a penny, take a penny. Oh, but, that is like such. So like, if you if you this is the deep door monster. Is that a recurring like, thing? Anytime there's literally anything written on anything in a shot, it's Kyle's handwriting. That's true. I even have a, I have a saved font uh, yeah. that is Kyle script that is my handwriting that I could uh, put up for download if anybody wants it. I want it. I always figured you didn't really like write anything. You just drew letters. That's a weirdly accurate way of putting. <laughs> I was always insanely jealous about it because. Of no, course, thank you. I, I appreciate my, it. My, I, it, my, it. It came from the comics, actually. Yeah, it came that from makes sense. Doing, actually, yeah. yeah. It's really just Kyle Comic Sans, isn't it? That's so funny. It is. It literally Weird. is. It is, wow. just, it is just the handwriting I developed to write comic strip dialogue very clearly, and I just never really lost it. So anytime I, like, take time to make sure each letter is clear, I just kind of go back to that same style, whatever it was I was doing back then. Literally, your fingerprints are all over all these uh, these these uh, signs in shot is because uh, putting... That's a good point, yeah. Putting text in a, in a camera shot is always actually a stupid thing to do because it will always look worse than you want it to. I even put it there because there is a give a penny, take a penny sign behind yeah. the one I put on there, but you couldn't read it because it was right. it didn't show up strong enough on camera. So that's why I wrote that out and taped it there. So it was like really visible. You know, it's funny. I mean, I've always kind of knew there was no there was like a give a penny, take a penny sign behind it. Right. But I finally like I was you just said that I'm like, but you can see it very clearly. It's like, oh, well, I used to be watching this on a 12 and a half inch CRT monitor. And now I'm watching this on a 65 inch television in my living room. So hmm. maybe. I'm noticing yeah, that's true. <laughs> Weird. 
I think the I think my last input for the video is um, that this uh, this was one of those where it un- unintentionally I think had like far reaching echoes across the rest of our lives that we made this when we did mm-hmm. because I mm-hmm. also submitted this to the uh, art institute student showcase that happened like later mm-hmm. that year I remember and that. that is the only reason anybody at the school knew who i was because i didn't like make friends i didn't talk to people who were in the area and so because i put this up we probably have a couple of crew members <laughs> because right. of this video and you put up this video which the entire message of which is do not talk to me or me my son ever again <laughs> right. or i will make you my son right and it's a uh, uh, and everybody's like oh he's friendly <laughs> Like if somebody never ever talked to me in, in school, then I walked in and just put in a VHS tape and it was just them burping loudly at camera for 15 <laughs> seconds, I wouldn't be in their film project. How did I you feel do like it that was so real well? on the edge of having like like being really like somehow I landed on the side of this that was like uh, endearing and someone people wanted to get to know rather than like school shooter. And right, I don't actually, know how I did that. <laughs> another thing that ties you and I together, uh, a complete inability, no matter how hard we should be. Uh, uh, to be threatening, um, <laughs> which is really like 85% True. of downside. This video is me trying as hard as I could and it just still doesn't sell. <laughs> Crazy. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in again. We will be back. I think, I think next week is Zucchini and Rhubarb. Next week is Zucchini and Rhubarb, a completely different facet of comedy that is equally important to our roots. Yeah. I think each one of these like pre- uh, uh, weekly schedule really are like us learning some new facet of the style we eventually use once we're actually like doing it full time and uh, zucchini and rhubarb is definitely a part of that I'm not sure which part mostly the Ricky part maybe if you're enjoying this show consider maybe going to patreon.com slash door monster and donating there um, and you can get access to another podcast of me and Allison just kind of Uh, shooting the shit when she comes home from work and also will uh, help support more of these videos being made and the more get made the longer this podcast goes for because we're going to keep making these for every video in the binge watch list so the more the binge watch list fills up (laughs) it's a race even if i I have to make a bunch of stupid four second binge watch episodes uh, (laughs) i will make it to my four thousand episode limit thanks for watching um end episode end bye (laughs) 